Loose ball, and he is not able to control it. A turnover, and all oh, along, Richardson will slam it. The greatest upset in the history of the NBA playoffs. The Golden State Warriors with their first playoff win in 15 years. I can't believe it's been 10 years. It seemed like it's, well, it doesn't seem like it's just yesterday, but it doesn't seem like it's 10 years. Everywhere I go, this is the first thing people say is that Golden State team. We came together in a short period of time and made history. The way that team was orchestrated with trades late in the season and, uh, you know, the run we made to make the playoffs. To be the AC, to be the number one team, especially that number one team was supposed to win the championship that year. They just made us a better team and they brought their swag and they brought just a ton of energy. I remember Al Harrington when he first got here just brought a ton of energy anytime he would be in the game. Guys like Steven Jackson that could guard the four, could guard any position basically. Not to disrespect anybody on the team but just a bunch of guys that at the time nobody wanted so to speak. You know Jack was just coming off that trouble in Indiana. Uh, you know Baron had within some turmoil, you know, always, always a good player but just never really turned the corner. Um, you know Monte was young. Jay Rich was always, you know, they always had bad teams here. We all came together, had instant chemistry on and off the court. Definitely off the court too. Everybody on the team was nervous, but like we were all excited because if, if there was anybody that, you know, we needed to measure ourselves up against was Detroit. The Detroit game was the, the turning point of our season because of Barron. I think that was the first time we were full strength. Uh, Barron was coming back from different elements he was dealing with. I'm in my hometown in front of all my fans, all my family, friends, and we just went out there and dominated the game. And we kind of looked at each other after the game and getting on the plane like, wait a minute, man, we could, we could actually do this. That was the game when I literally looked on the TV, TV set and said, wow. They believed that this thing was going to get done. And when I came back, that was the Denver game when that was the first time the famous We Believe placard, the big, huge sign that I brought into the arena, was uh, first introduced. We out there, we beating Portland, we coming back to the bench, trying to keep an eye on the scoreboard, seeing if the score come up for the Clipper game. We approached it as a playoff kind of game uh, that would be good for us going, if we made the playoffs, and if we didn't, we'll give it our own. Me and Adonno Foy were the longest tenure guys there. To get that feeling and finally make the playoffs after six seasons in the NBA, it was, uh, it was something you won't forget. Don Nelson um, getting in the paper and told the press that uh, we was out of it. There was no way that we was going to win. I set a different approach in the media, just trying to get everybody at Dallas to relax. But uh, behind closed doors, you ask every player, you know, we always talked about we could beat this team. I just remember game one. All of a sudden, Don Nelson had a scheme defensively against Dirk Nowitzki. Nowitzki was their big guy. They took him out of the series because every time he turned his back to the basket, someone came and double teamed. Avery Johnson changed the starting lineup. They got off to a good start in game one, and then we made a little push, and then they called timeout. And, uh, and it was like, yo, this is what we want. This is, we're not going anywhere. This, we're going to be here a whole time. We won the first game. We was like, whoa. <laughs> like, this happened the first game? We thought maybe game two we'd sneak and get them. But the first game, we was like, man, we beat them. Oh, we're going to win this series. There's no way they're going to beat us in the Oracle. Game Ops people called me and said, have you drove by A80? There's a gigantic cut-out T-shirt that read, We Believe. And I'm out there two hours before the game, and the arena is sold out. I mean, and the fans are standing up cheering. 
And I walked out and I'm like, what is going on? Still to this day, people say, you know, that was the loudest they ever heard Oracle. You can't talk, you can't hear anything, you can't even hear the music. That's how loud the fans were. We is like, we gotta calm our nerves. I mean, we got so much adrenaline, so much energy. Let's bottle that. That's not get nervous and, and kind of blow this thing off. Aaron Davis gets inside. Oh, Chance for a three-point play. Dallas had went to in game five, started trapping Barron at half court to get the ball out of his hands, uh, and they beat us in that game. When we came back here in game six, and so we worked on that pressure, and uh, they went to that strategy again late in the game to trap Barron uh, at half court, get the ball out of his hands, and, and we shredded him. Davis has two of the baskets, three points. There's a step back, and it hits. A tie game. Dirk has yet to make a shot from the floor. He works here against Al Harrington. Gave it up out of the double, and Jackson intercepts it. There's a little mark in the arena by the visitors' locker room from that series. Dirk Nowitzki took a chair and threw it against the wall. It's kind of a monument, if you will. He was so frustrated. Jackson in the lane. Score for the foul. There's a timeout on the floor with 846 left. If it wasn't for Sack, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have had a chance of winning. You know, I thought he played uh, MVP level basketball and, and was really our unsung hero by doing it on both ends of the floor. Good defense by Devin Hill. Richardson for three. Takes the shot clock. Is that encapsulate the series for a run? It does. I've never been to the finals, never been in a um, championship, NBA championship game, but uh, that moment I felt like I was part of one. The people behind me were in a, in a suite, and they bought me a margarita. Uh, late in the fourth quarter, I was drinking a margarita, working radio. We danced a lot, and our swag was on a million, especially after that series. We hung out with Snoop after game six. Came to the game, and uh, we went out after, then went back to his hotel room, and you know, just he just told us what kind of fan he was of us. Our confidence level was like, you know what? We're good enough. We can win. Being an eight, so being an eight seed, we can win the championship. People play it all the time oh, and like, send it to me. Baron's dunk is, I compare it to like uh, Kevin Johnson over Akeem Olajuwon. Karolinko's a blocker, so when you see him go up, you know, you kind of know what's going to happen. And he just kept going up, kept going up, and when he finished on him and the way the crowd reacted, it, it kind of made you jump out your seat. Now that I got kids, and my kids will probably never see me dunk, <laughs> keep playing it over and over and over. <laughs> exhausted going into the Utah thing. In the playoffs, your margin for error as you get round to round gets smaller and smaller. A couple games in Utah, we let go. I think that last one in Utah, we let go with the free throws and we just couldn't close out the game. We only made it to the second round, you know what I mean? And like I said, it's still a team that we've talked about forever. That group of guys, that We Believe team, we still hang out every summer and talk about what if. You know, what if we didn't trade Jay Rich? What if we would've got KG? What if they would have kept us together for a couple more years? You know, so it was a lot of what ifs, and it, we could have, we possibly could have got a championship. You never know.